The history of Dr. Kenneth Wells' opera goes back decades. In junior high, Dr. Wells listened to opera recordings with his close friend, Richard Raudebusch, at which time he decided that he wanted to write an opera of his own. In the late 1980s, Raudebusch was diagnosed with an advanced form of colon cancer, with a 2% chance of surviving two years. Dr. Wells arranged for his friend to meet a UCLA oncologist who put him on a new therapeutic drug. Mr. Raudebusch went about his life not knowing if the treatment would work. Clearly, a distraction was helpful. Together with their friend Gail Patterson, they decided to write an opera. The libretto was written over the course of two years, at the end of which Mr. Raudebusch was not only still alive, but feeling healthy. At the five-year mark, he was cancer-free. Dr. Wells decided that if his friend could beat cancer, he could finish the opera. So he went to work and composed the music for their triumphant libretto. Two decades later, the 62-year-old Raudebusch, a tenor, took the stage and performed in the opera, an opera that in some important ways helped save his life. Um, when I started composing, when I was around 12 to 14, little ditties, little pieces, around that period of time, I went to my first opera, and um, my, one of my best friends from junior high school it started bringing me home after school to play different opera arias for me. And I decided when I was about 12 or 14 that someday I was going to write an opera. <laughs> um, I don't know that I took it very seriously, but later on in my life when I decided I was going to put this creativity into my work. I found this memory <laughs> in my mind that I had told myself, you know, during junior high school that I said, one day I would do that. So, and, and what day was that? When, where were you in your career when you started working on this opera? That was um, 20 years ago, probably 22 years ago now. What happened is this friend from junior high school who had introduced me to opera was diagnosed with having terminal cancer, was given about two years. We, we were told he had a 2% chance of living for two years. And I got him reevaluated at UCLA. Um, they put him on an experimental protocol. He had, it, it turns out it saved his life. We didn't know that at the time. But to distract ourselves, we decided to write an opera libretto. And uh, we took a trip to New Mexico to the Santa Fe Opera with um, the wife of one of our friends who was a historian. And we talked about this idea. And um, the, 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 our, our historian friend, Gail Patterson Strauss, uh, suggested uh, Eleanor Roosevelt because uh, she said there are too few operas about women heroines. They're, they all have consumption or they're prostitutes and they die. And what about someone who's accomplished something? And we thought that was a good idea. <laughs> and uh, uh, I recruited my 10-year-old son <laughs> to help us because he was a very gifted writer as a young man. And uh, the four of us sort of worked on this project for two years. It's an unusual plot in that it's very much a story of people's psyches and their feelings, their souls. There's not so much external action. There's nobody with the sword. Well, that's the psychiatrist in me, right? So I, I guess clinically, um, what's always interested in, in me are the small turning points in people's lives. Like that moment when I told myself I was going to put, you know, always do something creative with my work and so on. I mean, that was a turning point for me that strongly influenced my direction. And working with people clinically, I, you might say I work to try to help facilitate those turning points. How can people take a stress, a loss, a tragedy, or something wonderful, and pause just long enough to think about what this means to them and how they might be different afterwards? So that's what interested me. Um, it, it's not kind of why we started doing the opera. It was to do something about a heroic figure. And um, we spent a couple of years you know, doing extensive research. And 
uh, my friends, you know, kind of allowed me to do the major drafting of the storyline. And um, what fascinated me was, you know, kind of what I imagined was a turning point for Eleanor Roosevelt, which was the death of her husband, um, finding out again about his inf infidelity or continuing relationships with someone that, that he, he swore he would never see again. And, um, and what that must have been for, for Eleanor uh, within a year to go back into public life and have probably her greatest accomplishments after that point. So the question was how to capture that, and I saw it as kind of like one of those turning points that had interested me, um, that she had sort of engineered herself. 